This is the Orishnik missile, a state-of-the-art weapon system launched from a massive 12 by 12 truck platform. It has been meticulously engineered with multiple stages, enabling it to reach orbit in a few minutes. But what sets it apart from all the rest? Well, this missile can hit hypersonic speed. Once it reaches this altitude, it transitions into a steep dive, accelerating to hypersonic speeds. During its descent, the missile's fairing opens to unveil six highly sophisticated warheads. Each warhead is equipped with miniature thrusters at its base. These thrusters enable the warheads to maneuver dynamically, even as they fall under the influence of gravity. It can change directions, making it almost impossible for the Patriot missile to hit its target all in the video ahead. The missile design incorporates three distinct stages. The first stage consists of mobile thrusters, which help move the missile, and it is filled with solid fuel. Just above it is the second stage, followed by the third and final stage, which holds six warheads, each with their own engine. This design enables the missile to deliver a powerful payload over long distances with remarkable precision. Weighing up to 50 tons at launch and carrying the warhead payload of 1.3 tons, the Orishnik missile has a range of 4,000 to 6,000 kilometers. This is capable of hitting all over Europe. What's particularly fascinating is that this missile is equipped with a sophisticated MIRV, multiple independently target aimable reentry vehicle system, capable of deploying approximately six warheads. These six reentry vehicles are reportedly based on American designs. Although much of the technical information remains classified, here is what we know so far. The missile itself is launched from a self-propelled platform equipped with a 12x12 wheel configuration, allowing for significant mobility. The TDL Transport Erector Launcher System supports a cold launch method. Let's take a look at what is a cold launch system. A cold launch is a type of missile that is ejected from its launch tube or canister using an initial burst of compressed gas or a small explosive charge before its main rocket engine ignites. This launch method contrasts with hot launch systems like the THAAD or Patriot, where the missile's main engine fires while it is still inside the launch tube or canister. This cold launch technique reduces wear on the launcher and minimizes the risk of launch site detection. Additionally, the TEL is equipped with advanced hydraulics for stabilization and precise alignment of the missile before launch, ensuring accurate trajectory initiation. The system also integrates secure communications and command links with Russia's strategic rocket forces, enabling coordinated fire missions. At the front of the re-entry vehicle is the fuse and the nose, which are critical for its aerodynamic performance and functional operation. Directly behind the nose is the contact sensor, along with the arming and fusing system. This system ensures the warhead is armed and ready to detonate at the correct moment upon reaching its target. Moving further back, we find the warhead compartment. This section can house a nuclear warhead, making the vehicle a potential tool for strategic deterrence or offense, depending on its intended use. One of the critical features of this re-entry vehicle is its ability to maneuver and change direction while traveling at extremely high speeds. To achieve this, the vehicle is equipped with two spin nozzles located at specific points on its structure and a spin gas generator, which provides the propulsion necessary for such precise movements. Finally, the guidance system plays a vital role in ensuring the vehicle reaches its intended target. This is facilitated by a GLONASS antenna, which utilizes satellite navigation technology to guide the vehicle accurately to its destination. Let's take a look at how does it work. The missile begins its flight by firing its first stage boost motor, propelling it out of the silo. Roughly 60 seconds into the flight, the first stage separates, and the second stage motor ignites, while the protective missile shroud is jettisoned. About 180 seconds after launch, the thruster ceases and the post-boost vehicle, also known as the bus, attaches from the rocket. The post-boost vehicle maneuvers into positions, preparing to deploy the re-entry vehicles. As the bus moves away, it releases the re-entry vehicles because the last stage had traveled at a very high parabolic path. The re-entry vehicle will fall at hypersonic speed of around Mach 11. These multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles use these rotating thrusters to target the vehicles towards its target. Finally, the nuclear warheads detonate, 
either as air bursts or ground bursts, depending on the target mission requirements. What's so special about this ICBM? Speed plays a pivotal role in the effectiveness of missiles. The faster a missile travels, the quicker it can reach its target. After launch, the missile ascends into the upper atmosphere, where it travels at high altitudes before descending sharply toward its target. In high-stakes scenarios, even a few seconds can make the difference between a successful interception and catastrophic damage. If we move the longer shot, this is how it travels. Ballistic missiles, in particular, operate by following a characteristic parabolic trajectory. As the missile re-enters the lower atmosphere, it can accelerate significantly, gaining immense kinetic energy. This energy is not merely a measure of its destructive potential upon impact, but also enhances its ability to maneuver mid-flight. Such maneuverability enables the re-entry vehicle to perform evasive actions often likened to a defensive wriggle to outmaneuver interception attempts. This agility poses a formidable challenge for advanced defense systems, such as Ukraine's US-built Patriot missile, which are designed to detect, track, and neutralize incoming threats at a particular speed. The Patriot will not be able to calculate and hit a missile moving in zigzag directions at hypersonic speed. In short, defense systems must not only react faster, but also anticipate and counter unpredictable movements in real time. This is why this missile is special for the Russian forces. To give you a better idea, let's compare the Iskandar with this Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. By examining their trajectories, speed, range, and intended uses, the Iskandar missile follows a quasi-ballistic trajectory, lending characteristics of both ballistic and cruise missiles. Unlike a traditional ballistic missile, the Iskandar can maneuver mid-flight, unpredictably altering its path to evade missile defense systems. Additionally, it travels at much lower altitudes, which further complicates interception by conventional defenses. In contrast, ballistic missiles follow a high parabolic trajectory that consists of three distinct phases. In the boost phase, the missile powers its ascent. During the mid-course phase, it travels through space in a largely unpowered gravity-influenced path. And in the terminal phase, it re-enters the atmosphere, descending rapidly toward its target. When comparing speeds, both ballistic missiles and the Iskander can achieve hypersonic velocities. Traditional ballistic missiles typically exceed Mach 5, but the Orshenik ICBM, Putin says it can hit Mach 11 during the re-entry phase, making them difficult to intercept. The Iskandar missile is similarly capable of reaching hypersonic speeds, ranging between Mach 5 and Mach 7. The range of these missiles is another key distinction. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, are designed for extreme distances, exceeding 5,500 kilometers, which is about 3,417 miles, making them ideal for global strategic strikes. On the other hand, the Iskander missile is a short-range ballistic missile with a range of 500 to 700 kilometers, which is around 310 to 434 miles. This keeps it firmly within the short-range category and aligns it more closely with battlefield-level operations. Finally, the intended purpose of these missiles highlights their fundamental differences. Ballistic missiles, particularly ICBMs, are strategic weapons designed for long-range, high-impact scenarios. They are often used as a deterrent or for targeting critical infrastructure and global conflict. In contrast, the Iskandar missile is a tactical system optimized for battlefield use. It is specifically designed to strike enemy air defenses, command centers, and other key installations in localized conflicts, making it a versatile and precise tool in regional engagements. As an engineering channel, we also made the secrets behind this stealth bomber, so check this out and do subscribe to not miss a beat.